This video is designed to accompany the protocol Panel Optimization for High Dimensional Immunophenotyping Assays using Full Spectrum Flow Cytometry. This is video 2, which follows Basic Protocol 2, Unmixing Evaluation of Fully Stained Sample. So I'm still working in Cytex SpectroFlow software here, and I've just unmixed my data as described at the end of video 1, which was the end of Basic Protocol 1. So I've decided on the optimal spectral reference controls, which is a mixture of cells and beads for my single stain controls, and I've gone through and unmixed using that special combination. Now I'm going to interrogate my fully stained sample to make sure that it is unmixing well and we're getting a positive signal for all of the markers that we would expect to see in this sample. So to start off with, we're going to do a bit of cleanup on the sample so that we are looking at nice, good uh, cells of interest. So the first thing to do is to gate based on time. We want to get rid of any events that were collected during unstable flow, such as if there was a bubble in the line or a slight clog. So I've put time on the x-axis, and you want to gate around any regions of instability. So this sample was a very nice clean collection, so there's not really much for me to exclude. It was a very good acquisition. The next thing to do is to gate out doublets. So we're going to do this twice, starting with forward scatter area versus forward scatter height, and taking this diagonal population. Drilling down from here, we're going to do doublet gating based off side scatter. So again, side scatter area versus side scatter height and taking the diagonal population. Drilling down from there, we are then going to gate out any aggregates. So aggregates can be most easily found by looking at a series of n by n plots as they will appear as really super bright events that may be incorrectly unmixed. Um, so we earlier made some n by n plots as part of basic protocol 1. So I'm going to reuse these just to search for anywhere that aggregates might be able to be gated out. So if I come back and open my worksheet template here we are. I'm going to take a quick look at these n by n plots and see if I can find any aggregates. So far so good. There's nothing here. Let's look at a different parameter. No, there's nothing here. So this was actually a very clean prep and all of the aggregates were removed during the sample processing and staining protocol. Um, so there's no aggregate gating that we need to be doing, which is great. So we'll skip that step. Next, we're going to gate out dead cells using our viability die. So um, you can place your viability die on the x-axis, and then you can just leave this as side scatter, but you can also change it to forward scatter. So at the same time that you're gating out your dead cells, you can also gate out your low forward scatter debris. So we're going to do that. Gating on our events that are negative for the viability die, and also are not our low forward scatter debris. There we go. Drilling down from here, we can now gate on our cells of interest. So this panel is interested in T-cells, so I'm only going to put a gate around lymphocytes, just here. Okay, so here we have our clean single cells of interest, and all further analysis should be done on this population. So now we're going to check 
to see whether we can find a positive signal for every marker that we would expect in this panel. So in this panel we have a series of markers and we expect all of them to be expressed within these cells. So I want to see a positive signal for every single marker in the panel. In some experimental cases, this may require activation of cells um, or certain treatments. Um, when optimizing a panel, you really want to be able to see a positive for every single marker in the panel. So um, whatever treatment your cells require to get that, um, you'll have to apply that. Luckily, these naive cells express every marker in our panel, so we can just use naive cells. So what we're going to do is leave side scatter on the y-axis and change just the x-axis to each die in the panel. So we'll duplicate this plot and turn it to the next one in the list. Duplicate again. Going down the list. And so on, if we highlight the whole row, we can create a new row immediately, and so on and so forth, until you have made a plot for every single marker in the panel. Okay, once you have made all of your plots, all you're going to do is check to make sure that there's a positive signal in every single one. So I'll quickly scan down the plots and for most of these it's very obvious that there is a positive signal in each one even if the signal is rare we can still see that there's a positive there and even in cases where the signal is dim it's still coming up above negative and so we have positivity in every single marker, which is great. All of our antibodies are working, and we're not using anything at too low of a titration to be seen. The next thing to check is that our unmixing is working accurately, and that we're not getting any unmixing errors in our full stained. So to do this, we're going to open our worksheet template that we created, as part of basic protocol one. Here we are. And what we're going to do is just ratchet through every single marker in the panel and check our unmixing. So let's start at the top of the list. And again, we're looking at uh, seeing the center of the positive matching up with the center of the negative. And now we're going to be looking in two dimensions because we have our full stained sample. They're not single stain controls anymore. So basically, as long as we're seeing these big L's, sometimes with double positive populations, then our unmixing is looking great and we're not getting any skewing of that positive population, either up or down. So we want to go through every single marker in the list and make sure that our unmixing looks really good. Once you have checked every single marker in your panel to make sure that the unmixing is looking correct and you're fully stained, then you can move on to the next protocol. If you're seeing slight issues, then it may be a case of going back to your spectral reference controls and seeing if swapping one or two out will fix anything up. Otherwise, you may need to make slight adjustments to the compensation matrix um, to just tweak up any slight issues. If you're working with particularly complex samples, um, then there may be uh, extra accommodations that have to be made to get your data to look as nice as this. Um, usually relating to autofluorescence. So those will be covered in a different video, but for now our mixing is looking great, so we're ready to move on to the next step.